So, it's been a while since I've made a video on a Ratchet and Clank game. So much for the every other video thing. But that's all okay, because... Because I'm doing a video. A video on a Ratchet and Clank game. R right now. Ratchet and Clank 3, otherwise known as Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal, haha, <laughs> ass, is a 3D action <clears throat> platformer released in November of 2004. Probably not gonna do that whole dumb coughing joke again, as I don't really feel like it's necessary at this point to say why the whole cough cough thing. So this will be the last time that I say it. Probably. I say, um, <clears throat> because I wouldn't really say that there's too much of a focus on platforming here. It certainly has more than in previous games, but it still takes a back seat in favour of combat and exploration. Much like its previous two instalments, Ratchet and Clank 3 was developed by the wonderful Insomniac Games, who at this point cemented their status as bloody swell people after creating one of the PlayStation 1's frontrunners, Spyro, and one of the PlayStation 2 mascots, Ratchet and Clank. So I guess they made two of the PlayStation 2 mascots. There's two of them, and not, and, and not one. So without further ado, let's hop into Ratchet and Clank 3, Return of the Cat Bloke. Keep in mind that I'm going to be playing through this game using the HD collection for the PS3, as it's just easier for me to get footage. So yeah, enjoy looking at floating helmets. Because they really messed this collection up, and I don't even know how. That helmet is too big for you, Ratchet, why are you wearing it? Why are you wearing a helmet? That's too big. So the story picks up shortly after the events of Ratchet and Clank 2, with Ratchet and Clank chilling out and playing chess when a group called the Galactic Rangers contact them and say, Hey, you're right, mate. Um, looks like your home planet is oh, it's right fucked, isn't it? Well, uh, nice catching up with you. To which Ratchet quickly replied, Oh. Oh, bugger. After returning to Ratchet's home planet and chasing away these little bad dudes, we find out that an evil bloke known as Dr. Nefarious is behind the invasion. Ratchet and co quickly decide that it would probably be in their best interest to pursue Dr. Nefarious and stop him from doing anything nefarious. I'm sorry. They quickly find out that Nefarious used to be Captain Quark's arch nemesis, so instead of saving people, they decide to track down Quark because, I mean, you can't have a Ratchet and Clank game without Quark. Where would we be without his majestic chin? Look at it. It's amazing. So it looks like Quark has become a monkey man and has a monkey pal. But all this monkey business doesn't last too long as Quark quickly regains his sanity through watching Ratchet play the Captain Quark video game. A bit later on, Clank gets kidnapped by Nefarious. Nice job there, Clank. That's two kidnappings in just as many games. You're a bloody terrible secret agent. He's asked by Nefarious to be the poster boy of his plan to get rid of all the squishies, organic life forms, as he's the star of Secret Agent Clank, which is a thing in this game, apparently. Clank swiftly refuses and is replaced by an evil clone named Clunk. After chilling with Clunk for a bit, Ratchet and Clunk head off on a mission with Skid McMarks, where poor old Skid gets killed captured by Courtney Gears, an evil robot singer, and is turned into a robot. After beating up a pop star and getting poop stains to safety, Ratchet and Quark set out on a mission to capture Nefarious, but it turns out they walked right into a trap as the ship they've boarded begins its self-destruct sequence. Ratchet manages to escape the explosion, but Quark, being the silly old git that he is, decides to stay on the ship to gather information. So, he did. After mourning the death of the Crimson Chin, Ratchet and the Rangers attempt to save Metropolis from the Tyranoid invasion, when Dr. Nefarious reveals that he has this big thing that can turn his little army dude things into big robot army dude things. Ratchet manages to escape the kerfuffle when Clunk tries to kill him. Clunk dies. He is dead. Clunk dead. And Ratchet and Clank are reunited. So, after a bit of investigating, we find out that Quark faked his own death and was just chilling in his secret hideout where, after confronting him, we're shown that he's too scared to fight and quits or something. I, I don't really know. Ratchet and Clank manage to destroy Nefarious's evil Robotinator thing. I'm not even going to try and pronounce its full name. Actually, you know what? No, I will. I will try. B -b -bliter bi bio bio Obliterator. That actually wasn't so bad. But after destroying the bio Obliterator, we find out that a more advanced bio Obliterator was being prepped for its first use on Nefarious's home turf, yo. Jack and Daxter manage to find and defeat Nefarious, but before before they can celebrate, he manages to pop into a big-ass robot, and being a big-ass robot, 
he tries to squish Sly and Bentley. But luckily for them, Quark comes in and distracts him, giving Link and Navi a chance to destroy the bio obliterator. Nefaris's teleporter then messes up, causing for him and his butler to get stranded on an asteroid. And there you have it. The galaxy is saved yet again by Ratchet and Clank. They finish off their adventure by going and watching the newest Secret Agent Clank film and have a jolly old time. Overall, I would say that this game has one of the best stories in the Ratchet and Clank franchise, with an interesting plot, great voice acting, some really solid comedic writing, and two of the best characters in the entire series, Nefarious and his butler, Lawrence. Seriously, I always looked forward to seeing these two on the screen. I'm really glad that Nefarious is becoming a reoccurring character in the franchise, as he is the perfect villain. He's insane, funny, evil, and has a butler. You really can't ask for anything more than that. Something that I do still really love about this story is the fact that Insomniac managed to incorporate several characters from the first Ratchet and Clank game into it by having them be part of the Mighty Morphin Ratchet Rangers. It isn't really anything big, but it's nice to see them pop up again. So yeah, overall, the story is pretty good. I like it. It's fun. Kept me playing the game, but it didn't. The gameplay did. Speaking of gameplay, let's talk about gameplay. See that sick segue? Here we go. In terms of gameplay, everything here is pretty much the same as in Ratchet & Clank 2, with some very minor control tweaks, a fancy new HUD, and this little control scheme that lets you always strafe, which I personally really like. It might have been in Ratchet & Clank 2, I just didn't really check, but it's nice. All of the weapons still feel fresh and are unbelievably fun to use on the countless hordes of enemies that you face throughout the game, and whilst there isn't too many segments that focus on the platforming, the areas that do tend to be well done and are pretty fun to traverse. Throughout the game you're met with several levels that spice up the gameplay a bit, the notable ones being the Quark game, vehicle segments, and the Clank segments. During Ratchet's adventure, you're able to find five different episodes of an episodic game which tells the story of how Captain Quark beat up Nefarious that one time. These games are your standard 2D platformers where all you really do is run through a level collecting coin things and then if you're lucky, fight a boss at the end of it. Whilst these aren't fantastic, they're still perfectly fine, but I personally would have much preferred it if they were optional side quests, but for the most part they're necessary to continue the story, which is a bit daft in my opinion. The vehicle segments tend to just be, hey, drive a car around and shoot things, or hey, fly a spacecraft around and, you guessed it, shoot things. Whenever I got to one of these sections, I would find myself leaving my chair and going to a farm where I would let three llamas swiftly kick me in the face. After getting my face mauled by llamas, I would patiently wait to be taken to hospital where, after some minor surgery, I would be full of morphine and painkillers and able to play through these levels without getting bored. The vehicles all control well, but my god are these levels boring. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing really bad about these sections, so to speak, but they are so average that it just really distracts from how fun the game was up to that point. The good part is, these levels are somewhat far and few between, so you don't really have to endure them too much. In Ratchet & Clank 3, the Clank levels seem to have taken a bit more of a Ratchet & Clank 1 approach instead of having the several different robots to use at your disposal, like in Ratchet & Clank 2. Here you only have the one type of robot and a monkey. These areas play out very similarly to how they do in previous games. Just now, Clank has a banana gun, which can be used to make the monkey run to a certain location, such as on a button or in the way of spotlights, to help Clank. It's actually pretty messed up when you think about it. Clank straight up sends this monkey off to get shot, just so he doesn't have to take the risk. You're a bloody robot, mate. Just, just repair the bullet holes. Don't let Monkey get shot at. Alongside these Clank levels are the giant Clank levels, where much like in previous games, you're a big old robot who goes around and beats up stuff. There's literally nothing new here, but it's still fun, so it gets a pass. The last little gameplay variant that I'm going to talk about here is the Tira Guys talking minigame. It's basically the most dumbed down version of Parappa the Rapper that you can get. That's all I really have to say about it. It's, it's pretty dumb, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's pretty silly. One of the most important aspects of Ratchet and Clank to me, as you already may know, is the ability to explore various worlds and look for collectibles. Luckily for me, this game has both of those things. From the more detailed and gorgeous wasteland that is Ratchet's home planet, to the beautiful underwater realm of Aquatos, Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal is full to the brim with interesting and diverse worlds for you to explore. It also helps that all of the worlds look absolutely stunning thanks to the top-notch graphics in this game. There will be times during my playthrough of 
this game where I would just be ignoring the current mission and just looking at the world around me. It's really that good. I would even go as far to say that the worlds in this game are almost as good as the planets in the original. The only complaint I have in terms of the planets would be the sewers. Much like in Ratchet and Clank 2, there's an area in this game where you can look around for crystals to exchange for easy money. In the previous game, you were able to explore a beautiful snowy landscape for these crystals, whereas here, you're limited to an ugly sewer. There's just nothing but narrow hallways, poop and slime dudes. It almost feels like the entire crystal hunt was added last minute. It's nothing but bland repetitive hallways with crystals lazily hidden around them, which kinda sucks. Throughout your journey, you're able to find a few collectibles that are scattered around the worlds. As always, you have your gold slash platinum slash now called titanium bolts, which are well hidden and can be used to purchase different cosmetic skins for Ratchet. And you also have these new trophies, which are also well hidden and can be used to access the Insomniac Museum when they're all collected. These two collectibles offer up enough of a reward that it really kept me searching for them and wanting to explore the various worlds of this game to collect them all. So it's all good there. Much like in the previous titles, Ratchet and Clank 3 gives you a range of fun and satisfying weapons to use at your disposal. From a giant laser whip to a gun that turns enemies into ducks, you'll be sure to find something that tickles your fancy here. You're also able to level up each weapon five times, which actually made me use weapons that I wouldn't normally have as I wanted to hit max level for everything I had due to it being insanely addicting. Alongside the new weapons, you'll also be able to use a few of the old ones as long as you have a previous game save file on your system. System. But that isn't all the older save files will do. If you have a Ratchet and Clank 2 save file on your system, then you'll get an employee discount on all the weapons and ammunition that you buy from Megacorp, as Ratchet worked there in Ratchet and Clank 2. That's actually kind of cute if you ask me. I like that. Another addition that I quite like is that good old Insomniac allow you to test out all of the weapons before purchasing them to see if you actually want to buy them. Good on you Insomniac. Good on you. Overall, Ratchet and Clank 3 is a near masterpiece and definitely one of the best games for the PS2. If you haven't already played it, or if you think that you might have a good time with it, then definitely give it a shot. You probably won't regret it. So where does this game slot in on my list of best to worst Ratchet and Clank games? I can hear you probably not asking. Well, it's gonna go in first place because while I do love the original Ratchet and Clank, this game is definitely superior in pretty much every way possible apart from the worlds. So that does it for Ratchet and Clank 3 up your arsenal, and also the original Ratchet and Clank trilogy. Yay! If you made it this far, then look, here's a little treat for you, just for you, because you'd be such a swell person. Open up Ratchet and Clank 3, and when in the game, open up the pause menu, and press circle, square, circle, square, up, down, left, left, and bam, you got yourself a Darth Maul lightsaber instead of your wrench. That's pretty cool. You got it instead, it's light and it glows. It's cool, okay? Not gonna lie, that actually blew my mind as a kid. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it with your friends, family, or creepy neighbor, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Just wanna say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, Austin, James, Stuart, Melvin, Joe, Mark, Classy, and Harvey, I really can't thank you all enough, it means the world to me. If there's anything you liked or didn't like, be sure to let me know in the comments down below or tweet me at Snooping Turtle. Also, if you want to watch more videos of me doing dumb stuff, then you can check out this video I did for my personal top 10 favourite PS2 games, or this one I did for Big Thinker's First Grade. That's all from me now, I hope you have a lovely day, Bye bye